You look at Leon Edwards, you know you've got a real one on your hands. I would believe they'll be a world champion. There's so many moments in Leon's career where he's getting the short straw. Oh, it was a uh, poke in the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Being rich enough. Oh! 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 No one's coming here to save you. You have to go out there and do it yourself. His story is as fascinating as any fighter on the entire UFC roster. He's seen stuff far worse than anything that can happen in sport. You get one shot at being champion of the world. You just got to get through Kamaru Usman. Kamaru is the number one guy, pound for pound, the best fighter on the planet. Does it get any bigger than this? This path that I've went down is for this moment. Alipurian, England, Leon Rocky Edwards! I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, from a mom that had me when she was 15 years old. That's, that's my mom. Oh, hello! Oh, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> in the area I grew up in, there was like gang wars. In my area, my dad was the leader of the gang. Being around like crime and guns and shooting. I lost count from people I've known that's like murdered. It met me when um, I was about six. I didn't know I had a brother. My mom and dad split up. My dad took Fabian to his nans. And it was never mentioned that I had a, <laughs> <laughs> that I had a brother, which is f***ed up. I came to the UK at the age of nine. My dad came first. He came for like a few years, remarried. Then he brought me, my mum and my brother to Birmingham. Grateful to come to the UK and to make a better life for me and my family. But my dad ended up getting murdered when I was 13. I was close to my dad, you know, and when he got killed, I got a phone call late at night, about two or three in the morning. I could hear my mum crying on the phone. We lost our dad when we was young, so one base I had to play in both rounds. Especially being in a foreign country as well. She's a tough woman, but she's been for a lot, you know. <laughs> Mommy's you supporting Leon. Show. Always supporting yeah. Leon. The first time I got into MMA, I was age 16, 17. I was walking on High Street with my mum and there was like a gym UTC game built. <laughs> and she was like, oh, you should give it a go. But no, she was on saying it to get me out like hanging around with my friends in the street and getting into trouble. Hey, that me. I still gotta ask the man. You told me he's in my car box. I was always getting like either arrested for knives and getting into street fights and stuff like that, you know, and she has been to the police station many times to come and get me. Are you ready, Leo? I'm ready, coach. When she suggested MMA, I said, like, cool, I'll give it a go for you. She signed me up and then I just fell in love with it. Leon came in, he just looked, you know, a bit special. There was just something about him, you know? The more I got involved in it, the more I started researching it, the more I started seeing different fighters, and I was like Googling what kind of money do they make, and I was like, okay, you can actually make like, a career out of this. That drove me more into the gym, more into like dedicating myself. I train in the morning and I stay in the gym all day. Then I train again at night. Let's go. Keep your shape, keep your balance. Then they saved my life and showed me a different path. Sharpen your words up, keep your guard up. Same my little brother as well. Like when I was on the street getting into trouble, he was following the same path as me, you know. He even got arrested and actually went to prison. When he came out, he got into MMA as well and changed his life around. Never before we'd be doing, like, fighting for a living. I never nah, thought, you know what I mean? Nah, nah, nah. 2014, he rang and he's like, oh, I just got in the UFC, but don't say nothing just yet. Back then, I weren't really training that hard, I kind of faffing around, you know what I mean? So, when he said that, I thought, let me fix up. He's inspiring everyone, man. The first time I fought Kamara was in Florida. The whole camp was about defending his wrestling and it was more like a defensive mindset more than what I need to do to him to win. There was glimpses in the fight, in the stand-up, Leon was starting to get the better of him and Kamaro just resorted to what he knew, which was the wrestling. Kamaro was just shooting constantly for takedowns. He was in his wheelhouse. Back then he was just a wrestler. 
but it was absolutely a competitive fight. He was a good fighter. He implemented his game well. Kamara Usman, up until that point, had stopped everybody as well, by the way. That was his first ever decision that Leon Edwards extended him to. The winner, by unanimous decision, Kamaru, the Nigerian nightmare, Usman. I knew that eventually we'd meet each other again in the future. He just vowed that it's not going to happen to him again. And started focusing on myself, focusing on getting, being a better martial artist, not just a striker. What do you need to do to get better? He's getting the rounds in. We're trying to work on obviously what we've been practicing for this fight. You know, so positioning, scoring areas, you know, and just putting it into practice, really. Ever since I first saw Leon, I always knew he was something special. He's technically brilliant. He's a good listener. He's like a sponge. He takes things in, and if you don't get it right, he won't leave it till he does master it. I've been training with Leon, I'd say, about four or five years now. And, yeah, I've learned a hell of a lot from, from Leon. He's evolving into a very uh, well-rounded fighter. He's just got it all. He's, he's a supreme athlete. He's, he's got the striking. You know, he's, he's an excellent wrestler. He knows his jits. He's fit. He can go for five rounds. He's got all the weapons. It's his work ethic, you know, seeing what he does in the gym, how he trains, his discipline. If you want to get to the top or get to where he is, they're the things you have to do. He's huge for the weight class as well. He's very tall, he's very long. He never comes in out of shape. He's extremely disciplined. He went on that win streak. He got some good scalps under his belt along the way. You could see then, with each and every fight, his takedown defense was getting so much better. His grappling was getting so much better. Beat all of them fairly easy. The more win, the more confident I got, and the more I believe that what we're doing is correct. The Daniel Cerrone fight, that was probably his biggest fight up to date. That was the main event. I was excited. To get somebody like Cowboy Cerrone, who's a Hall of Fame legend, that was massive for Leon. It was a big moment for me. I remember watching him when I was just starting MMA, but when I start to fight, I don't put no one on, on a pedestal. When you get opportunities like that to take the shine away from big stars, you've got to grasp it with both hands, and that's exactly what Leon did. I think I answered a lot of questions with that cowboy win. Leon Edwards was fighting Gunnar Nelson. Masvidal was fighting Darren Till in the main event. Darren and Leon, they were having a little bit of beef. He says that he's number one in the UK. I know I'm number one in the UK. Till was the blue eye boy. He was seen as the man in England. Leon, because of his character, who's a bit laid back and the social media and the shouting off at the gob, that's not his thing. I want to fight, so when he's ready, I'm ready. Don't get me. Ah, uh, shut up. You don't want to fight. Leon, do you think I'm scared yeah? I don't give a f I'm scared or not. Do I care? Oh, we, we, I don't, I don't you're scared because you're saying I don't want to fight yeah? You don't want to fight though. Oh, it's yeah. the dad until show. Yeah. <laughs> He was disgruntled. He'd been on this fantastic run. He wasn't the main attraction. He'd done more in the UFC at that point than Darren had. The UFC wants someone that's going to be talking a lot and acting brash and da-da-da. And Leon's not that person. Leon's going to go out there, give you a good fight, collect his check and go home. When he came out on fight night and he's getting booed, by his home fans, that must have really stung Leon, and he didn't deserve it. At the time, I was like, <laughs> you know, representing Jamaica from now on, you know. I was a little puzzled, but of course, Darren is, you know, extremely popular. Darren was the main guy, the guy for the UK. All the crowd is more so from like Liverpool. But I am focusing on Gunnar Nelson. Gunnar Nelson was seen as one of the best, if not the best grappler in the division. And Leon matched him in every department. I 
beat Gunnar Nelson and Till got knocked out by Mastodon. Oh, told you, what did I tell you? I told you. And then that sneaky little rap Mastodon, what he did after. I think it started from social media. We was going like back and forth for social media, and that was the first time we seen each other, you know. And after beating Gunnar Nelson, I was like on the high. <laughs> Shut, hey, come over here. I said to him, I have to knock out a tail that we'll fight next. That was it, he walked up towards me, threw a few shots and security like grabbed my, my arms back and just took him away. Where we're from and how we've been brought up, that's what's called a Judas. Yeah, I wish I could have killed him, but... <laughs> Celebrating my winning my team and walking towards my changing rooms and... I just wasn't in the mind frame to think that he, he would try to hit me. I haven't seen him since that incident. I don't know where they took him, but they came to Fighters Hotel. The uh, UFC, they took his stuff and somehow they took him out of the country. Give him the three piece with the soda. That's assault, simple as that. That's assault, that's not what we're doing here. We could have pressed charges, but where we're from, we don't roll that way. And we just thought, well, okay, payback's a bitch, but we'll get you somewhere down the line. He'll get his time. It's so unlike the UFC not to pounce on something like that and use that to sell a fight. I'm still puzzled to this day, to be honest, why that fight hasn't happened. He doesn't want to fight my brother because they know, like, if you get all of that stuff in the cage where it really matters, you'll get yourself broken too. The UFC obviously had a different plan for Masvidal and he went off and just went on this crazy run. I think they were protecting him, you know. I think they were giving him the right matchup to favour him to try to build a star. Masvidal was on top of the world, and Leon was kind of getting left in the shadows. They know if they gave me to master at the time, I would have killed the hype. He rightfully got his opportunity to headline a card in his own country. This is like every UK guy's dream, you know, to headline a UFC event in the UK. The fans were starting to build behind him. The fans were starting to say, I'm with this guy. I've just seen him light up Rafael de Sanos, the former champion. Beating Rafael de Sanos, that's like the line in the sand. That, that's like, you can't deny me anymore. Look what I've just done to the former champion. He's going to fight another former champion in Tyron Woodley, who at the time was hot. This is a big opportunity for me. Yeah! To beat someone like Donald Woodley, it's gonna be amazing. Action. Yeah! Everyone would have been there for him, cheering for him against Woodley. That opportunity taken away from me because of COVID. The fight cancelled on the Sunday, the week before the fight, and he did like a whole camp and he saw tickets and all your friends and family is coming to watch you and then heartbroken. If that fight would have gone ahead, Main event, Ultra Arena, all the media spotlight on it, and Leon pulls out one of his best performances, he would have fought for the belt after that fight. Simple as that. To have been ready, been in shape, and not have an opportunity to, to compete was depressing. He's watching the division move along because he cracked on in America. He can't travel there. The UFC are trying to get international fighters involved in fights, and they come up with this great concept of Fight Island. So they put a title fight on Fight Island, and then the number one contender, Gilbert Burns, gets COVID. On six days' notice, a phone call goes in to Leon Edwards, who hasn't been in the gym for five months. Can you go to Fight Island and go and fight for the championship? Rightfully so, he's gone, Nah, man, I ain't been in the gym for five months, and I'm fighting what people are saying is the number one pound for pound. No, I'm fair play to it. And because of that, there's unfair punishment that comes his way. To be removed from the rankings through no fault of his own, it wasn't like he lost. It just goes to show the disrespect that he's been having. What's going on? What the f is the UFC playing at? They offered me a new guy, Hamza. They were like, if you don't fight, I'm going to take you out of the rankings, basically. This was Hamza Chumayev that was tearing everybody apart. I've caught the world's attention. And yet Leon Edwards put his hand up and said, I'll fight him. I'll put my top five ranking on the line. He accepted the fight and he was back in the rankings. But then, unfortunately, Hamza went and caught COVID. 
Leon knows he was never going to get an easy shot at this belt. You want me to do it the hard way? Cool, man. This is my life. I've done everything the hard way. Leon finally gets a main event. It's taking place in Las Vegas against Bilal Mohammed, a very, very tough fighter, and a guy that I would say is a good litmus test in terms of going up against Kamara Usman. They're both very, very strong wrestlers. The game plan was for Leon to jump on Bilal quick, put him in his place, you know, to let him know that he wasn't in Leon's league. Oh! oh. Head kick wow. Wow. He's he's legs. He's and there. now he's going oh, in. Oh, my goodness. I went out there, felt great in the first round, shook him up, almost put him away. Leon looked amazing. I thought he was absolutely flawless. Oh, oh, oh another poke. Stop. Oh, it was a uh, poke in the eye. Yeah. Just getting into momentum for the second round, you know, and then the eye poke happened, and I thought, ah, oh, no, not again. What has this kid got? What has he done? How many mirrors has he smashed? How many black cats has he walked past? How many ladders has he gone under? If I got caught off, and I was upset, to say the least. I didn't mean to do it, you know. I went for the cross head kick. He stepped into it, and I, I really apologise. But I, I rather a loss than, than that, you know. I'm just heartbroken. I don't know, I don't know what to say. It was like to win anywhere. No, no, no. I just wanted a home voice, you know. But you know how frustrating the last two years have been for me, you know, and then I was hearing him own voice, and I like, held it in for so long, and the whole year and a half, two years just came out. There's only so much bad luck that people can take. Lesser mentally strong people would have gone by now. It's Leon Edwards. Now you got to work and know when you got to hold back the middle, Leon. Circle off if you lose, get back into it. Get ready. Three, two, one. Time. Grateful to have my brother to share the same journey with you. you know, not, like I said, not many people can say that. Nice. Turn when you can. There you go, and out. Inspire each other to push each other further. He's also achieved amazing things in his career. Camps is like one of my main training partners. Not just have a brother that competes in MMA, but he's also good at MMA. It's always hard to spoil brother sometimes. You don't, you don't like hit him hard, you know. You kind of like inspire him, but you're also wary of not trying to like <laughs> knock him out. You know, so still good though. Give him the good work, good push. He's a good weight and fast stands, strong. No standing still in the front of him, Leon man. I need that on and off constant movement going on. He's not going to allow me to slack. I don't want him to be um, like pitter pattering around. You know, he goes to his spars. He gives me real good work, man, and real good advice. Touch, touch, pop, pop, touch, touch, go. finish with the kicks. Up and down. How good would it be to have like two brothers, two of the biggest organisations in the sport, Bellator and UFC, that will both hold the world title? I don't think that's ever been done before. Match your hand speed now, let's go. Last 10, Rock. That would be like incredible. Nice one, jump back, Fabs. He gets the Nate Diaz fight. Nate Diaz, fans adore him all over the globe. But he's not the best fight in the UFC. He's never won a UFC belt, but he's a cult hero. Big name in the UFC. Main event. I thought, okay, cool, perfect. Opportunity to show my skill set and what I've learned over the last two years. Leon was beating Nate Diaz from pillar to post. I remember fighting and thinking, oh, this, this is quite easy. We made Nate look like an amateur in my eyes. It was embarrassing if you're Nate Diaz. But the thing about Nate Diaz is that he's never out of the fight. He'll never give up. Leon just turned off for that slight moment. Bang. I was gonna put my telly through the window, <laughs> like honestly. I just thought to myself, God, you can't be so cruel to this kid. Come on. I was screaming my head off, but he showed his heart. I was thinking, there's no way I'm going down, you know, like, it's not happening. Even though he was wobbled, he was still smart. He looked at me, he looked up at the clock, and once I seen him do that, I knew he was back. Nick Diaz should have rushed in then to try and actually win the fight. But instead, Nate Diaz stands back and admires what he's done and kind of points at Leon and goes, uh -huh, and gets a viral moment. And that viral moment becomes the story of the fight. What a fight. Crazy. Wow. 
in the morning. Everyone talking about the win. They're also talking about the end of the fight. That's all that people were talking about afterwards. And I don't understand it. Why Leon Edwards can't get his respect. That's just Leon's journey in a nutshell. A unanimous decision! Leon Rocky! Let's get Leon his fight. He absolutely deserves the next title shot. Now he's got one fight and he can put all that to bed because if he becomes the champion of the world, people cannot deny him anymore. The hardship I've been through, the ups and downs in my career, the ups and downs in life has built me to this moment. I truly believe that I will become a world champion. He's just got to get through Kamara Usman. The magnitude of the task is big. People recognise Kamaru Usman as pound for pound the best fighter on the planet. He's never been beaten in the UFC. Nobody's even looked like getting close with this fella. A go! But Leon Edwards is more than capable of dealing with this. If you beat the man, you are the man. I'm looking at him as a new opponent. He's been choked out before, he's been hurt before. So this is not no mystical man that can't be touched. Seven years since the last fought, I think. And since then, um, I went on the street, even on the street. Now, here we are. Leon was better than me. There's a reason why he's in this position. He's had to wait a long time for his title shot, but he's stuck in there, you know, stay disciplined, stay patient, and he's finally got his time. The setbacks, the holdbacks, people writing him off, not giving him the credit he deserves, but he still did it. He still became the number one contender. He knew what he deserved and he just stayed to it. He can't help but be inspired by that. Now I'm a full-blown mixed martial artist. I've beat some of the best guys out there. I am a seasoned veteran and for now will be the difference, my experience, my knowledge, my IQ. Usman will assume that he's a better grappler and I feel like he's going to get a shock, you know. I feel like Leon is going to come out and show that he can wrestle, he can grapple. And obviously he's striking, he's definitely the best striker in that division. This is the perfect time for us to fight in. I, I cannot wait. You get one shot. One shot being champion of the world. And this is it, it's here, it's at his fingertips. You can see the belt, but it's not his, it's Kamaru's. He has to take that belt. I've dreamed about this moment for a long time. Wrapping the belt around my waist, you know me, passing it to my mom, celebrating with my team and just to finish what my dad started. When the fight was announced and I was like, listen, this is where you really change your life. You've changed it already, but this is that next step. And you're just like, yeah, man, he's like, look what dad started and now we're going to finish it, but we're going to finish it on a positive note. Future champ, Sharp double front. champs in the house. Let's go. <laughs> Leon Edwards was born for this. He's fighting an elite dude, but he will not choke. All of his career has come down to this one moment and he earned it every single step of the way. To see it fulfill his journey, oh man, I, I can't express what that would mean to me. When it happens, it does. I know my emotions are going to come out because I just see how hard he's worked. Get it back to Birmingham, get it back to the community. A very long time coming.